Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in Nyanarasana Putra. Head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, back, hips, legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, blue madhya. And at the blue madhya, visualize the form of either your guru or your ishta devata, a brightly burning candle flame. In maintaining your awareness on this experience, we shall chant the mantra Om three times together, followed by Shanti mantras. Take a deep breath in. Together. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunatu Sahavir Yankaravavahai Tejas Vinavadhi Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Hari Om Tatsat Gently shove your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Ariyom, Tatsat, Namunarayan, Jai Ho. Namunarayan, Swamiji. And... Uh... Gopal, can I request you to turn on your video? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Namaraina Swamiji. And uh, Namaskar and good evening to all the attendees today uh, for this interesting session that is part of our fortnightly series of uh, the spiritual sessions, which is part of the birth centenary year celebrations of our Guruji. Uh, Pujya Paramahansa Swami Satyanandji. So today's topic is quite interesting on something which we experience, all of us have definitely experienced on stress management. But when I looked at the topic, what was sort of a little bit intriguing and cryptic was on the title, which uh, uh, Swamiji has, has uh, kept for today's uh, session, which is the de-stress and eustress. If I, I I don't know if I'm, I'm pronouncing it also right. So there was a lot of sort of a curiosity, uh, and I was wondering as to what these two terms would mean. But I'm sure Swamiji, with his with his uh, uh, holistic insights, both spiritually and medically, is going to enlighten us today and uh, going to throw more light on on that subject lot of questions that I have, all of us would definitely be having. And uh, I will also try and look at the chat window for the questions. And uh, without really spending much time, right, uh, uh, I would I would request Swamiji to, to really throw uh, a light on this and share his, his insights and wisdom on this very interesting topic. So Namaskaram Swamiji. And uh, and Namunarana, and uh, I, I request you to to start the deliberations. So a very warm Namunarayan to all of you. And uh, Gopalji, how many what light should we shed? 
<laughs> so, Vijay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I am sure once you start speaking and once we start listening, it will be the it will be as bright as uh, the sun in the night. So that cannot be measured sun in the night. That, okay. Yeah. In okay. that in, in terms of lumen. Sun in so, the night means it is not going to be there at all. <laughs> so I think I'll keep quiet, Swamiji, because <laughs> I know I'm treading into a very dangerous territory, and uh, I will just keep quiet. So Namaskar. All right. So that was also a very simple example of stress. When uh, Gopalji was caught, un, uh, he was not on his guard, he was not prepared. He was not very sure what to say because he was, and that is a simple example of stress in our life. And that type of stress is there at all times. Stress actually is there right from the first moment of life. If you know, and if we have, we do have doctors with us here also, and you would know that uh, the doctors would know and all the mothers would have personal experience. In fact, all of us have the experience, but we have forgotten it. The process of taking birth is one of the most stressful events in our life. It's not easy. If you actually look at it medically, it's one of the most stressful events. It is something like having a heart attack over 10 hours. That's the type of pain which the mother has to undergo and the type of gymnastics which that little baby has to undergo to come out is something which is unimaginable. And many times I think that when we have successfully navigated such a great stress in our life, why is it that we keep getting floundered by stress all over? And I think the reason is that in that moment, we are in tune with nature. And so the natural systems take over. And these natural systems, they create a very huge change. You can imagine this baby till this moment, till the time the baby has not come out. This baby did not have to worry about how blood is being sent to the whole body. It did not need to breathe and to provide oxygen. The mother was doing it for him or her. Now, suddenly, within first two minutes, first one minute or two minutes of life, the entire physiology inside has to change from one to other. And the type of changes which take place are very baffling. And they are very awe-inspiring. But they happen because everything happens in a very strictly controlled, cascading manner. If we man manage to maintain that, then there's not going to be any problem in our lives. But when we mix up these things, then there is a problem. And that is the reason why the topic I have chosen is from this stress to you stress. We might have heard the, heard the word dysfunctional. What does dysfunctional mean? Anybody? Has the properties to work, but it is not able to, to perform for whatever limitations and for whatever... Uh, so that means uh, the functioning has gone off, basically. Yes. It right. is capable, but it is not able to do it. Yes. Yeah. It is capable, but it is not delivering. So, when the stress is there and it goes off the normal range and it goes out 
of harmony, then there is difficulty which comes in the body. This means which creates something which is not normal, not healthy, not conducive for growth or health. That's why we call it he is dysfunctional. And what is EU stress? EU indicates good, positive, useful. So the idea is not to get rid of stress. No. Because if you want to get rid of stress, then the best way is to become a vegetable or a stone. Just you are a stone and you have absolutely no stress. Whatever is happening, you are just lying there immune. But then there is no progress in life. Like a stone, you keep sitting there in a corner. That is not what is there for us. For us, we need to progress. But when we want to progress, then every challenge is an opportunity for growth. If we want to develop our muscles and do bodybuilding, we go to the gym and work out. What is the molecular effect of exercises? And when is it that you can <clears throat> actually develop your muscles? It has been seen that when you are lifting weights and when you are lifting weights, you go beyond the capacity. At that time, there is a microscopic injury which takes place into the filaments of the muscles. This injury triggers a healing response and the newer reformed muscle filament which develops at the same place is a stronger muscle filament. Earlier, I was able to lift only 5 kgs, 5 pounds maybe. Now, I am able to take 10 pounds and 15 pounds and 20 pounds. How does that happen? That happens because I am exerting a microscopic injury. But remember, when this microscopic injury happens and we are working on the computer continuously or in today's times we are working on the mobile, then you start getting arthritis of the thumbs, you start getting tennis elbow, you start getting uh, frozen shoulders, you start getting problems in the body. Activity is the same. When you are continuously using a specific part of the body, in fact, computer professionals might have heard of this RSI. Repetitive stress injury is very common in computer professionals because they have to continuously hunch up their shoulders and keep on typing and typing and typing or use the mouse and you are using only a specific set of muscles and you are overworking them. Therefore, there is a repeated stress which is exerted on them and that creates an injury and that creates a problem. Injury is created both places. But in one place, you are able to bring about a beautiful, nice-looking body. And in another place, you are riddled with different types of problems. That is the difference between this stress and you stress. And the difference actually is not so much what is exerted upon us, but it is more what is our response and our ability for response to the stressor exerted upon us. So, Gopalji, that was the brief explanation of the terms distress and 
eustress so eustress would mean there is also a good category of stress now ji yes okay it says there's a new learning thank you sir uh so if can you describe to me what was it that happened when i asked you how many watts of light do we want to shed what was the uh, thing which took place in your mind i mean uh, you first of all samiji uh, usse pehle when you asked me to switch on the camera itself was uh, abhi bhi camera is off huh? so first of all when you asked me to switch off the camera switch on the camera uh, uh, focus and that was the first stress point and then you asked me a unprepared question out of syllabus uh, ka ek situation ho gaya so uh, yes somehow situation had to be managed so there was that immediate response to to when when i asked you that question which you were not expecting which you had not thought about which you, caught you off guard what uh-huh. the uh, response in your mind so 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 situation sambhalna tha and somehow yes i mean you cannot run away from the situation also so yes it was <laughs> it was a, a bit of stressful this thing so the first response jo bhi almost i blabbered out uh, which you caught to say how can there be sun in the night right so yes i mean it was some kind of uh, uh, making up the situation of to to do that but yes it was it was uh, it was off guard and stressful yes so the uh, yes that's a uh, nice question daniel we'll come to it mm. you see if i had told you that uh, look i'm going to uh, pose few questions to you also hmm. would you be a bit more prepared yes and would yes, you because would you be able to answer this question better uh, yes because yes. Uh, you you are anticipating correct. that yes correct this so, is exactly how yes. how what happened just now to you not just now in the beginning what happened to you was an example of this stress something a stressor event which created a in appropriate not in the you know how it is used nowadays but uh, towards the situation it was not the uh, congruent let's use the word congruent incongruent uh, response. response yeah that is a marker of this stress but when you are ready in your mind that okay now uh, i'm going to be asked few questions then what your mind is already you know thinking and uh, planning okay if this question comes this will if you are already prepared and then you are able to perform better correct true true, true. absolutely true sir that is you stress what what is the difference between the two that in in one you are reactive in the second you are responding based on the preparations beautiful. or the anticipation that you have beautiful yes. so that means it is your response which alters distress and makes it into you stress when somebody has when they say he has got great presence of mind what is it that when there is something totally unexpected which comes up the person can immediately flip it round and come out with something which is still in congruence with what is needed to be done that is great presence of mind true that is an example of you stress why is it that i am not able to have that great st- uh, presence of mind at all times did that uh, my neurons are structured differently and your neurons are structured differently no 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 the same the hardware is the same no the software is also same everybody no. has got windows uh, or linux or whichever is your favorite uh, software operating or system installed but how you use it depends on the user and the preparedness of the user if yes. the ram is sufficient if uh, all those other factors 
are appropriate, then the response comes fat, 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 fat. Otherwise, the computer takes long time. And then the, suddenly you have that blue screen which comes up sometimes. So uh, this is the pitch, is the pitching time from uh, microseconds to nanoseconds to something, something as fast as probably one, one would like to have so that you are not uh, uh, displaying yourself as unprepared and you are not unprepared because your mind has already given a very in very flash the answers which uh, are right for this. Very true. Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. That the ability to do that is converting distress to eustress. So, in the example of a computer, how are you able to do that? You increase the RAM. RAM. Is the disk yes. space? You increase the. Uh, you know uh, the, the 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 processor the the processing the processor speed processor so that speed it, the yes. all those things you start using use use a higher quality activity sure then suddenly as they said from seconds to uh, yeah. microseconds to nanoseconds, nanoseconds. response time and your answers will be also so that is how we have to convert this stress into eu stress Stress is a universal phenomena. Stress is a universal phenomena and it is not a phenomena which we need to be aware, uh, afraid of. Mm. And that is the reason why I have not used the word stress management. Nowadays, when people speak of stress management, they try to tell you how to reduce your stress. I don't want to tell you that at all. No. Rather, I would like to tell you how we can improve our capabilities so that the stress which is coming becomes something as a stepping stone for progress. I'll give you one example. There was a gymnast I would not, not like to name the gymnast, but this young girl, she was very afraid of heights. And when she was afraid of heights, then uh, she would not be able to perform. But she was even more afraid of her coach when she was young. She must have been six, seven, eight. And the coach would stand there with this grim face and a fierce look on his, on his face. And the moment she saw him, she used to get so scared that the fear of heights would vanish from her mind and she would start performing. And this went on for some time. And then one day, when the coach observed her and he realized that now she has gone beyond that fear of heights, he suddenly was not there. And when he was not there, the first jump when she did, she was a little bit startled. And she was almost, she lost her uh, cool and fell. Because she was so used to having the coach over there and it was that which was pushing her go ahead. But the practice over the years, uh, over the months, kicked in and almost spontaneously, she just started performing and per performed almost flawlessly. And in that moment, she realized that what the coach was doing, he was not really angry with her. It was just a, a front which she had created so that she can get over her fear. And she had conquered her fear. And so she used her fear to grow. And she became one of the best gymnasts of her times. This is how we have to work. There is stress, physical, mental, emotional, psychological, social, all sorts of stresses are there. But we do not have to run away from stresses. Rather, we have to learn and we have to know how we can improve our 
ability. That is an ability given to us, which is not given to inanimate objects. If there is a difference between humans and inanimate objects, it is this, the ability to learn, the ability to grow, the ability to become a better person, to upgrade oneself. And the yogic path is the path of upgrading oneself so that the stress which is coming to you, which is creating a distress and therefore distress, T-I-S-T-R-E-S-S, -S -S, that gets changed into a better response. That is what yoga teaches us. And that is what we will be discussing about in this. Gopalji, there, I think there are a few questions in the chat. Yes, yes, Swamiji. There are uh, questions from uh, um, Daniel Ji and Kaushik Ji. So uh, these questions are, yes, there are actually a yeah, number of questions. Uh, so one is to say, uh, I mean, Dan is asking, would becoming fully aligned with God, that is God realized, relieve one from all stresses? And now with everything seen as God's will, is there nothing to stress about? So this is an interesting question, Swamiji. And yeah. also, do our samskaras interfere with our ability to act with full responsiveness? And therefore, uh, uh, our... I mean, can they relieve the stress, right? And then there is a question from... Okay, so we'll take them one by one. Okay. Uh, so sure. the first question was... Uh, first question was uh, that... Would becoming, would becoming fully would aligned becoming with God... Al yes. Relieve one of all stress. Uh, you see, in the Bhagavad Gita, it is beautifully said, Pashyan Shrunvans Prushan Jigran Ashnan Gachan Swapanshwasan what does that mean? When you reach that state, then you are not seeing, you are not doing, you are not talking, you are not breathing, you are not eating, you are not swallowing, you are not blinking your eyelids. Talking is happening through you. Digesting is happening through you. Speaking is happening through you. Actions are happening through you. You are not doing it. It is happening through you. So when it is happening through me, there is no stress involved at all. That is one way of uh, going beyond stress. And that's a beautiful way. But it is not always easy because God-realization is something uh, which is very difficult for all of us. So if it is difficult and if it is possible only for few, then what for the rest of us? Should we live in stress? And have another stress piled upon us that, oh my God, this is yet another thing I can't do. No. You have said very beautifully, alignment with God. And you will remember the theme of the previous month was balancing the head, the heart, the hand. That is yoga. So when we start becoming aware of these aspects, the head, the heart, the hand, then our abilities start changing, our responses start changing and our understanding starts changing, our uh, decisions change. And then what happens is taken in stride and is taken as an opportunity for further growth. There is one more important thing. Swamiji, in one of his satsangs many, many years ago, I think it was in the late 60s or early 70s, Swamiji had said, Swami Satyananda, he had said that we have got one circuit which is running this machine, the body and the mind. This circuit is able to work the body only till a specific level. 
it is not able to go beyond. I can be an ordinary person, a normal uh, uh, run of the mill type of a person, uh, plodding into the activities of life, skirting around the corners, that sort of a thing. But if you want to be an achiever, if you want to be a genius, if you want to be an excellent person in your area, then you need to have a separate circuit. And that circuit is, Swamiji said, the circuit of the Kundalini Shakti. When the Kundalini Shakti starts activating, then suddenly abilities start coming up. Of course, this is not as easy as it sounds. It is as or 100 times more difficult than a nuclear chain reaction. A nuclear chain reaction, the electric energy comes from the atom. The nuclear energy also comes from the atom. But the nuclear energy is exponentially powerful than electric energy. But to handle elect, uh, nuclear energy and to convert it into something which is a useful thing and not let it go out of hand into a nuclear explosion takes a lot of effort. Activating the nuclear energy is not so difficult, but maintaining that energy and not letting it disintegrate into disastrous consequences is the harder part. So that is something which we have to learn how to do it properly. So with that disclaimer, we need to know that if we want to turn the stress around in our life, then we need to make use of this ability, which is there in each and every one of us. It is not something which is not in any one of us. The creator or the creatrix, as we would like to address, has created within us the entire hardware and the software and the firmware. All we need to do is activate the appropriate apps. The functionality starts coming in. That is how we can convert this stress to use stress. There are problems. Do you think Homi, Dr. Homi Bhava did not have problems? Do you think Dr. Vikram Sarabhai did not have problems? If you look at their lives, the type of difficulties they had to undergo for establishing ISRO and uh, BARC, they are phenomenal. Do you know that ISRO was established first in a cow shed? Mm. It was not in a fancy laboratory. They started in a cow shed. Can you imagine a highly educated scientist having to work in a cow shed? But they did it. And today, ISRO is one of the top institutes in space research. Why? Because the person had the ability to convert those hard issues which came into something which gave a better response and grow with it. To do this, for us humans, individuals, we need proper diet, proper thinking habits, we need a proper lifestyle, and we need proper guidance in practices. We need these four things, and then we will be able to make a difference, convert whatever stress we have from distress to an actual stress. As a means for progress in life. That is something which we need to understand. Next uh, question, Gopalji. Yeah, I, I just uh, read that, uh, Swamiji. Um, Kaushik is asking to say that the effects of stress can be far-reaching and harmful. 
And for example, while sleeping, not able to clear the mind and thoughts keep running, are these constant thoughts which the mind is processing considered stress, right? And then there's a related question as to uh, how to overcome any failure in life. Now, that's a very broad-based question, but yes, Swamiji, these two questions are there. One is the impact of stress and uh, could stress be harmful? And second is uh, the failure, yes. how to handle it. Sure. Yeah. So, you see, uh, the after effects of stress are far-reaching, yes, and they can be harmful, very true. Uh, while sleeping, you are not able to clear the mind and the thoughts keep running and bugging us, bringing in blood pressure, bringing in diabetes, bringing in obesity, bringing in uh, cardiac problems, bringing in cancer, all these lifestyle disorders, they have the same root, inability to process them proper. And for that, we need to improve the quality of mind. Because if we want to convert stress into eustress, then we need to change the quality of the mind. The mind which we have at the moment is unable to handle this st stress. So therefore, it gives out an uh, incongruent reply, which gives out the uh, harmful effects like sleeplessness, insomnia, like eventually diabetes, hypertension. So what can we do for this? I would suggest you start with any yogic practices. We have been working with yogic practices in the morning sessions. And my aim is not to, uh, you know, have complicated asanas, but to show that yoga is actually a process. It is not gymnastics. Ah, those of us who can, it's wonderful. No doubt about it. But more important than just physical gymnastics is the process and the functionality behind it. We have to understand that the mind, somebody has spoken about samskaras. We got multiple filters in front of us. And the sum total of all these filters is reflected as the resultant color. You have a red, a green, a blue, whatever. And the color is net result of that, a resultant vector, so to say. Our effort has to be to slowly reduce these filters. And when these filters are reduced, then we suddenly see that, oh, my ability is already there. All what blocking it down is these filters. The moment these filters start coming out, the ability start coming up in the same manner as if you have got a very powerful computer great processor, all beautiful latest uh, uh, setup. But if you install five or six applications and these applications, they are creating an internal conflict in the computer work functioning, then the speed of the computer suddenly slows down. Now, in this time, if you say that, oh, the computer is not good, no, it is the mutual conflict which is creating this problem. You need to take that conflicting issue out. The moment you take the conflicting issue out, the speed comes up. How can we do that in our lives? That is where yoga comes in. And what is yoga? We use this word so frequently nowadays. Uh, the other day I was even seeing there is even a laptop or a um, tablet named some yoga. Lenovo. Yes, Lenovo. Lenovo, Lenovo yoga. yoga. So <laughs> now it's become very popular word. But what is yoga? 
and what is the physiological basis how it makes a difference within us that is something which we need to understand as i have said earlier there are three major aspects of our personality the head the heart the hands the intellect the emotions and our actions and they need to be in harmony with each other how will they be in harmony because my brain is giving some impulses one part of the brain gives an impulse another part of the brain gives another impulse something else is happening there is incongruence in the brain itself we need to bring that incongruence out and we need to establish congruence and when we establish congruence then there is a resonance which takes place and when there are there is there is a resonance then the amplitude goes higher if you have got two pendulums and they are of the same length and same mass you pull one pendulum automatically the other pendulum after some time will start swinging with the same frequency when they are in resonance so for that it is very essential to be able to bring all this uh, incongruence happening inside into congruence that is what yoga can do and it is done by multiple practices but all the practices have an impact on the functioning of the brain functioning of the brain mean, meaning the central nervous system the peripheral nervous system as well as the autonomic nervous system the emotional brain the neurohormonal control everything is brought into coordination and alignment when that happens then there are no discordant notes which come in that is the aim of yoga for us i am not now speaking about the ultimate aim of yoga which is good for theoretical discussion but totally useless for people like us who are light years away from that ultimate goal for us it is very essential to manage this stress and to manage this stress we need to bring harmony in and for this it is always said when you do asan you do it in specific sequence in specific manner with physical awareness with mental awareness with breath awareness and so on what is happening you are actually remodeling the functioning of the brain the firing of the brain impulses that has an impact on activities inside the brain itself that has an impact on your autonomic nervous system that has an impact on your endocrine system that has an impact on your emotional system when there is a congruence which takes place in those then automatically the abilities start coming up and then we know how to respond many times we already know within us but we are so overwhelmed by the situations that even while we know the response should be this way we are unable to give that response because we are overwhelmed yoga allows us to gradually underwhelm ourselves and when there is appropriate balance then when a message comes in appropriate processing takes place immediately because all the resources are available for that and the response comes in to do that we need to practice yoga and with yoga both the things you don't need to shave your head you don't need to wear keru or wear a mala no you need to Im implement within yourself imbibe those principles by which you can modulate the brain function by which you can modulate the internal functioning and the moment you are able to do that the change starts taking place and incidentally when we do this many of our samskaras 
which are the filters or the programs which are running in the background, they start getting turned off or eliminated. You know, we do that recycle bin. Hmm. So yes. we clear what is not necessary and suddenly the computer works faster because there's so much of garbage which was just sitting there. You empty the bin, suddenly you are able to function. This is what yogic practices and yogic lifestyle can make for us. How Swamiji, come. Yeah, the other question was on failures, which is slightly the emotional part of the the processing. So any any insights on failure and result and stresses, how to handle, etc. I am sure everybody knows this. It's a very uh, common proverb and we must have heard it many times and it has almost become like cliche. Failures are stepping stones to success. Hmm. Uh, who has asked Bandla Palli, right? Bandla Palli Pramila. Pramila. Uh -huh. Swamiji, uh, she's Monica, who you met uh, in Hyderabad uh, one day before. Okay, okay, okay. Right. So, uh, Monica, are you there with us? Yes, yes, Swamiji. Have you heard this uh, phrase, failures are stepping stones to success? Yeah, yeah. Heard it a lot of times. Yes. But the problem is how to do it. Yeah. If there is failure in life. What happens? Can you can you just you know explain when there is failure? What is it that actually happens, and what is it that we are unable to overcome? So that then we can actually use that as an explanation to understand this theme bit. We have so much of stress at that time. Uh, like we want to overcome that failure so that we can achieve anything. No, this is what we want to do, but we are unable to do and therefore yeah. we fail. So when we fail, what happens? What is the uh, emotional outcome? What is the physical outcome? What is the professional outcome? So if you can, you know, give me some e explanation, then that can become like a starting point for discussing. Although we are running a little bit late on that, but this is an important question. We may go to depression stage, I guess. You, you, you can take any hypothetical situation. You don't have to, uh, you know, have uh, your personal situation brought out. Just any hypothetical situation because the principles are the same. Hmm. You tell it, Swamiji. Okay. Sorry. So when I was very young, I wanted to play cricket and I was not able to play cricket or when I was very young I wanted to uh, explain something and I was not able to explain something and in the class everybody laughed at me because I had failed. I'm sure all of us have ex experienced this right? Yeah. Yes. Sure. So that is one beautiful example of a failure. There is a question which has come there is an answer which I have given which I feel is the correct answer but uh, everybody laughs and I am declared to be a failure here we have to be able to analyze three four different things first is was and this is something which we can analyze only later on in the heat of the moment it is rare for us to be able to analyze these things. Those of us who can are. So what is it that we have to analyze? What was the question? What was the uh, wordings of the question, the letter? And what was the spirit of the question? Because many times we have to understand that when a person is asking us something, actually they mean something slightly different. You must be knowing that many times people say no 
when they mean to say yes. Have you experienced this in life? Yes, yes. ma'am. So uh, that is one thing in retrospect, we have to analyze for ourselves. That person asked me this question. What was it actually meaning? Was it the letter of the question which was important or was there some hidden luggage behind it? Then we can understand. And then we realize that perhaps I have only answered the letter of the question. So then we come to know that, oh, this is one area which I have to work at. And when a question is coming, I have to also try and gauge what the person is saying and what the person wants to say. Point number one. Point number two. I said something. Responded. I want to say something. But I actually say something different. Because I might be overcome with a lot of excitement or a lot of fear or many reasons. Or maybe my communication skills are not good. My language might be poor. There could be many reasons. But there is a discrepancy between what I want to express and what I expressed. That's the second part. And the third thing, I have understood the question, the letter as well as the spirit. I have understood the expression which I want to give, what I want and what I'm saying. But what is it that the other person has understood? Either because the person wants to understand something differently or is unable to understand this or the person's ability is different or the person's background is different. There could be many different reasons why again this happens. But what is it that the person understands? It's not sufficient for me to say. There's a very famous example. The teacher said he is a fool. Now. What is the meaning? Everything changes the moment you give comma at a different place. The teacher said he is a fool. The teacher said he is a fool. You have just changed the comma and the meaning changes completely. So you have given the right answer. But beyond the answer, there are aspects. Have I been able to express it correctly? And there I need to also understand the uh, audience which I am in. So there are these three different aspects which we need to analyze. I have failed. Wonderful. Great. I can either keep brooding about it all my life. Oh, I was such an intelligent person and... Uh, this person did not do this for me. That person did not do this for me. That person did not do this for me. And that's why I have failed in life. Poor me, poor me, poor me. Or you can say, okay, that is how it has happened. It is up to me to choose how to respond. Like what Gopalji had said earlier, to respond, not react. I can choose my responses. And once I start analyzing what is it that has gone wrong, then you can immediately start making changes in your life very quickly. So, Swamiji, she, uh, yeah, Sheila Rajanji has raised her hand. Yeah, I, I know. Think she, From yeah. quite some time. Let me co complete this and then I will come. It is not very easy. I have just said it in a you know a few minutes. but. It takes a lot of effort, systematic effort to learn how to shift your awareness from the result to something different. And if you look at it, in the Gita it is said, and we had been speaking about it at some different forum about attachment. And the expectation and the fruits of the action. It is the same point which we have to do. Understanding is very easy that there are multiple dimensions. One is the action which has to be performed. We have already discussed 
we can do that action how into perfection i understand the question or the situation i understand my response i understand how i ex uh, give the response and uh, while giving the response i also have in mind the audience so i am giving a correct response that is there in my hand that is the action but what is the fruit of the action perhaps it is not what i expected so that becomes the expectation of the fruit of the action and then there is the attachment to the expectation to the fruit of the action yoga teaches us to break this attachment yoga does not tell us don't have expectation yoga does not tell us don't have fruit of the action yoga does not tell us don't have actions these three have to be there but the attachment has to be put somewhere else you can't we you and i are too small fry to say that i don't have attachment in my life no that can't work we will have attachment and that attachment has to be shifted that is what yoga teaches us and that takes time and systematic practice but it does work then we can convert failure into stepping stones to success because please remember any failure any challenge hardship is there in our life for us to progress swami shivanand ji used to say pain is that crucible into which nature throws man when she wants to convert him into a sublime superman if you want to become a superman super human super person then embrace pain embrace difficulties embrace failure hardships because they are the crucible into which you have to hold yourself and then the caterpillar metamorphosizes into a beautiful butterfly it doesn't metamorphosize just like that there is a lot of internal effort which has to be put in a very systematic manner that is the secret how to overcome the failure in life i would not say failure but how to overcome the blockages which come due to failure because it's basically in the mind and how to turn it round that is what yoga can do for us yes shila aap kuch bolna cha rahe the what i understand about stress is the mind is the basic or is a main factor giving the stress and then you your unconditional uh, devotion to god um, it really is part of the stress like um, uh, patanjali's uh, first yoga sutra says i mean when if your mind is uh, in peace then you can see the atman or um, to realize here, here we need to here we need to be clear that uh, when we are speaking of god then there are two different things one is surrender to god that is a different path and uh, the path of raj yoga is also a different path uh, so we should not confuse and uh, mix the two because then that can create uh, more conflicts rather than solving cons- conflicts it can create more conflicts both are correct paths but depending on our mentality our temperament our abilities and our requirement at that point of time which is the tool to be utilized only an expert can tell but when applied correctly then what you are mentioning goes ahead please continue and secondly i feel that the how to overcome the failure is we have to recognize failure is not only for you it is a universal thing everybody faces failure if you accept that fact then your mind will be calm and then try to um try to resolve the some of the issues because your mind is so full and your mind thinks only you have the problem so that's why it blocks all the uh, 
possibility of solutions. So if you kind of calm your mind and then think that every failure is is um, is a norm of life and uh, failure is present to everyone. So uh, if you recognize that aspect, then you can um, um, uh, you can kind of try to solve the uh, problem. It's uh, all that is all that is uh, Sheila. I must say all that is very theoretical. Many of us know what you have you know explained very nicely is in a summary. Uh, failure are stepping stones to success. We all of all of us know you have explained it very nicely and beautifully. No doubt about it. All very correct. The point is, even if I know all of that, still, when failure hits me, I am unable to uh, cope with it. Over there, uh, for us, uh, intellectual information is not sufficient. Inter intellectual information needs to be supported and supplemented by specific practices or ways or methods which uh, are very crucial for improving the ability of the mind, which you very nicely pointed out that basically everything boils down to the mind. It is mind management. How to do mind management? Yoga is all about mind management, time management, self-management. So that is something which is very true. Somebody has mentioned uh, success also causes some types of stress. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Don't you see that with uh, those cricketers? Every time they go out to play, they are expected to, you know, uh, perform all those, uh, what do you call? Uh, uh, fireworks and everything you can't and uh, that that plays that that plays a lot and in fact that actually reduces the ability many times so uh, again over here uh, like uh, sheila mentioned it is mind management how to do the mind management we have already spoken about the same principles apply application is what is very essential Samiji, there's also a question on uh -huh. uh, when all options and possibilities are open, how do we choose the correct one? And there's an example to say that children do not know the subject they choose. Young people do not know which spouse suits them and old people do not know which yoga to practice. <laughs> so, yes, that's an interesting question. <laughs> Especially, yeah, how to uh, uh, which spouse suits them, right? I mean, that's a very open ended question. Uh, for this, you need the ability of discrimination. Okay. This is appropriate, this is inappropriate. Given this situation, given these circumstances, given the parameters, this is appropriate, this is inappropriate. As the situation changes, everything might or may change. That is something which we need to learn. And this ability of discrimination, Vivek, is something which is very essential. But that doesn't come very easily. That comes with Swadhyay and Sadhana. Sadhana does not mean, uh, you know, uh, some very great Sadhana. Sadhana means doing something over a period of time and becoming perfect in it. Even if it just means that I get up every day at 4 o'clock and uh, do 5 rounds of Nadi Shodhan Pranayam and then I can go back to sleep. You just keep doing it for a long period of time. You will see that in itself has the ability to make a change in our life. And when that is supplemented by a proper swadhyay, the study of the scriptures, because the scriptures, they are shrutis. And what is shruti? Shruti or smruti. Shruti means somebody has an experience, which is a transcendental experience. And that experience has been put into words. It has not been put into script. That vibration is there. So it is able to transmit 
and energy. Studying that, it creates a change within us and an understanding develops. That is Swadhyay, Swadhyay. So Sadhana and Swadhyay, when you do that, then we get Vivek. And when we get Vivek, then we know. And as far as uh, the specifics are concerned, which, uh, what was it? Which uh, children don't know which subject to choose? Young people don't know which spouse to choose. And, and people don't know which yoga to practice. Yes. But then for that, do we even know what is the goal that I am expected or what I want? Which subject to choose? Why should I choose a subject? If I am myself not clear, why should I choose a subject? I have a different thought. My parents have a different thought. My teacher has another thought. My colleagues have another thought. But what is it that is needed? What is it that is essential? What is the, it that is going to help me? That is what we need to be clear about. Is it for self-improvement? Is it for earning? Is it for professional uh, abilities? Depending on that, we will be able to make a choice. So, therefore, it is always very essential to know what is the purpose. And the same thing with the spouse. What is the purpose of a spouse? Once that is clear, then the choice becomes easy. And the same thing with yoga. Once I know my limitations, once I know my abilities, once I know my requirements, then slowly I can start choosing. So therefore, we need to start working on this. And then, step by step, all the changes start taking place. And the innate ability is always there. <clears throat> this all might sound very heavy and difficult, but we must remember that there is an innate ability within each and every one of us to intuitively connect to the solution at hand. All we need to do is to be able to connect to that. And if we are able to listen to that inner sound, job becomes so much so easier. So therefore, there are multiple layers of converting distress to eustress, growing, upgrading ourselves. And that, I would say, the various yogic practices and yogic lifestyles offer us a very powerful, simple and effective tool to convert any distress into an opportunity for growth. Increase our abilities, increase our understanding and become a better person. More fulfilled, more enriched, more connected, grounded, in balance, harmonious. All those things start happening simultaneously, step by step, easily. I think we are already 10 sure, minutes yeah. beyond. Yes, sure, Samiji. So I think let us conclude now. If you have any other questions, anybody, you can uh, put them into, I will just put the email address. So you can put your emails on the, uh, you can send your questions on this and we can always take it further because this conversation was not intended to give a definitive answer. It's not possible to give a definitive answer to a subject as wide as uh, this within one hour. Right. The idea is to uh, open up a pathway so that we can start walking there. So with this, we should conclude. Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture. 
with your hands on your knees in Jnana or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back, straight line. Eyes gently closed. Awareness at the eyebrow center. Bring back the same image you had chosen in the beginning of the session. And maintaining your awareness on this, you shall chant the mantra Om three times followed by Shanti Pat. Take a deep breath in. Om. Satomasatgamayamaso Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Om Tremba Kanya Jamahe Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Urvar Kamiva Bandhanam Rutyor Mukshiyamam Rutat Om Shanti 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 Hands in Anamudra Twameva Mata Chapita Twameva Twameva Bandhush Chasaka Twameva Twameva Vidya Dravinam Twameva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Hari Ho Hari Ho That's it. Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then when comfortable, move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om. Sat. Namo Narayan. Jai. Namo Narayan Swamiji. Namo Narayan. So, let us conclude today. And uh, we'll continue on this journey. And in this month, with this topic of stress, we... Uh, will embark on the theme of this month. Arogyam Dhana Sampada. Health is actually the real treasure one needs to have. And health is physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, social, professional, in multiple dimensions. So how can we achieve health? When we have health, then we have wellness. How can we achieve that? That is the theme of this month. So, from today, we will be having multiple activities, discussions, talks, either in the morning mantra booster or at different activities, which we will be trying to understand this theme more in greater detail and having practical takeaways to make that change in our life. And if speaking of practical takeaways, one practical takeaway, whenever you are feeling stress, do one thing. Place your 
palm on your abdomen and consciously breathe abdominally abdominal breathing with awareness awareness at the nose tip that the air is rushing up the nostrils down the throat down the chest down the abdomen a short pause up the chest abdomen up the chest up the nose down the nostrils warm air coming out a short pause just spend 5 minutes becoming aware of your breath deep long breath that one simple activity changes the entire physiology of the brain and you will see many things which become unmanageable can come under control this is not the only thing which can be done and which should be done there are many others but this is the simplest which you can undertake anywhere just pause take a deep breath and keep breathing you don't have to place the abdomen hand on the abdomen but you just become aware that you are breathing abdominally deep abdominal breath and the abdomen is expanding and contracting use this and you will see there are phenomenal results so with this practical takeaway let us conclude today and then we'll keep in touch namo namo